What happens when you purify your body, your mind, your spirit? Something miraculous. The body begins to heal itself. Welcome to the Medicine Girl Podcast, where each week we explore new ways to heal your body from the root, igniting your inner healer. You are a medicine. And now, here's your host, Robin Stebbins. Welcome to the Medicine Girl Podcast, Jenna, <laughs> Rusted Soul. Um, I am just did a podcast with a guy that calls himself Barbecue Sauce on our channels, but um, he hooked us up. I'm so glad that he did because I was in Maui during the fires. I was actually in Lahaina and just on a whim there, there'd been fires all week. And as I explained, I kite surf. So I'd been looking at the wind models all week. Like all of us, anyone that kites looks at it like a crack it. So we're always looking at the wind, seeing what it's doing. And it was high the entire week. So to the point that I didn't even want to go kite surfing, it was so high. The The day of the fires, we'll just get into it. It was gusts, the highest gusts, but up to 74 in Kihei where we were staying. And then in Lahaina up to 84. But similar to what had been happening all week and those the, the winds in Maui are notoriously high and especially on that side because of the trade winds. So the the story didn't make sense to me that all of a sudden Lahaina is burning. So we left on a whim and, and as we're leaving, there's already setting up police barricades on, on the highway. And so it wasn't that I was leaving based on intuition, like, oh, there's a fire. I'm with my teenage son and his two friends. I got to be safe. It was just, I don't want to deal with this mess, whatever they're doing. Because they had been, they set up a police barricade where initially we were, Mount Haleakala, way across the island. We were going to watch the sunset, but they barricaded off that road. So we thought, no, we'll just come. We'll go to Lahaina. It's our last night. We hadn't been there yet. Went there and it was just, eh, it's not a really good place to watch the sunset. Let's go back home to Kihei, watch them set up the barricades. And then later that night at 1030, the boys came in and said, hey, we got an evacuation notice on our phones. I go outside and I look and there's a wall of fire, but not where Lahaina was. It was way back towards Haleakala where the grass fires had been. So none of it. Made sense. Then we get to, um, we were evacuated to the Maui High School. We get there and there's just, you know, people milling about. No one's in. No, it, people are kind of just confused of like, what, where is the fire? And then we were all watching it on the TV, what was unfolding in Lahaina. Crazy. Yeah. yeah did, like chaos. When you saw the barricades, were they uh, barricading people from like entering Lahaina or, or was it just, you could see that they were setting up for something, but they like, were setting up for something. They were going to okay. block so the road. It wasn't fully set up yet by the time you were just seeing right. that they were rolling out something. That, yeah. Okay. There were police around. Um, and, and we had just seen another police that had actually barricaded the road up to Mount Haleakala. Then um, when we got to Lahaina, my son's friend said oh they there is a hazmat truck going in and i thought oh it's just a no it's a yellow fire truck he's like no 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 that's a hazmat and he showed me on the phone it's like oh yeah it was a hazmat truck and this was way before like around three three or four o'clock wow okay so three or four so that's like um that's the time that they were saying somebody would have reported the or we saw pictures of the um all those cars that were parked in the same spot um, at three o'clock and they were at five o'clock. So I, I find that to be strange too. Like they were placed there, like they were staged um, cars all along there. Cause there's no reason why they wouldn't have been able to, to leave if like, you know what I mean? Like it hadn't yeah. reached that area yet. Like that's a couple of hours of time between, you know, like, and other people were managing to get out apparently. So, um, I don't know. I question all of the, all of the people, all of the things. Um, I definitely think that 
there was electric cars. Um, you know, the, if you look at the footage of, of um, the way that they burn and the, the aftermath of how they look, and a lot of them, you know, look almost identical to the ones there. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that it was, um, that they were all, because there was also footage I just saw of um, some, like, on the news saying that there was, um, they had to have, like, special hazmat crews to clean up the um, the debris from the electric cars because they, so which confirms that there were electric cars there, they wouldn't have special crews there to clean up the, you know, the debris from the lithium batteries and all that, and you know, if you look at all the, the footage of, of firefighters over the past 10 years, you know, p trying to put out fires, it's like more water that you put on, the more that the flames get engulfed and crazy and it's a really hard um, fire to put out. So, you know, that explosions happen when electric cars go off and um, same thing with the smart meters. They have exploded, have been reported to have explosions surrounding their fires that have started on houses and um, that's yeah, and I want to post that link that you sent me. It was a news report. It was in Stockton, California, mm -hmm. yeah. where they had, I'll let you tell it. Oh, yeah. There, I mean, there's several of these stories, but um, one of them in Stockton was that um, there was, ex you know, explosions happening. Um, the neighbors could hear it like there was, you know, apparently now too, Maui has, um, or all of Hawaii as of 2021 had all of, um, they were all converted already to smart meters. So that is the case in a lot of the blue states. Like, um, you can opt out in many of the red states. Like I could opt out in Arizona. I can opt out in Ohio, in Wisconsin, they wouldn't allow you to opt out. And I still had a, um, analog meter in my house in wisconsin and i put a sign on it like you know because they told me i couldn't opt out i'm like okay well then i'm just gonna sue you like yeah. if you come and change it out without my permission like that you know and if we start doing things like that where you know like putting signs putting a camera putting a sign that says if you touch this meter i will sue you like we have rights we should be able to um opt out of these things these services especially if we're paying for it like you have to pay an extra you know, in Arizona, it was an extra $5 a month. I think it's now an extra $20 a month to opt out. Yeah. So it does cost more. Um, I heard in, in Illinois, it's an extra $80 a month they've hiked it up. Yeah. So they are trying to make it hard on people to opt out. Yeah. Um, but, you know, or maybe even just getting propane, getting, um, getting a generator, going that route and, like, basically... Um, you know, cause I'm trying to look at like, what's the solution here? What do we do to, um, avoid, you know, like they can't have their smart cities if we don't allow the smart meters that, that yeah. really is like the backbone of their, cause then they can't control when they turn off your heat. They can't control when you, they, you know, the air conditioner in California, right. like they've been turning. Well, that's the, yeah. You know. So those puzzle pieces, I just want to kind of say from, I'll let you, um, mm -hmm. tell me what you think of what I have put together. So mm -hmm. when you have these fires, mm -hmm. when we had this fire in paradise, California, they sue the power company mm -hmm. and when they sue the power company they sue for negligence and that they had not updated their lines That's so they sue them for millions of dollars and it goes to the people that were involved in the fire um, i know an attorney personally that was involved with the lawsuits he's now going to lahaina to do those lawsuits so they sue the power company. The power company then has raised our rates astronomically. So normally my power bill was between 100 and 200 a month. Now it's sometimes upwards of 500 with no extra use whatsoever. Wow. Um, then they also, so now they're updating all of their lines. So we hear helicopters all over the place, the PG&E helicopters updating lines. Um, and then they have the, the cost of it is now going back to us, the consumers. We have no choice with power companies. So then as they're updating all these lines, they, they sent us a letter saying, our, expect to have astronomical power bills this winter. So they're making it so that all we can really do is work now for food, the, price of gas here is $6 and now our electricity heat and, and, and water bills. 
So then when we opt out of the smart meter, it took them, I, I opted out a year ago. It took them a full year to come out here to take it out. It's the procedure was they pull it out and there's some plugs in it and they plug in another one. It, take, it took them less than 10 minutes to do wow. that. They left the, the power, the smart meter actually on my gas meter, but it's not hooked up to the grid because the guy got his computer out and said, no, we can't find you, but it's still there. I don't know if that's still workable. They could still, you know, shut it down or, or whatever else. But also, you know, one other key piece in this is that California's made it illegal now to have incandescent, incandescent bulbs. So we all have um, to have these smart LED bulbs and then most meters. Which, um, which are terrible for you, by the way. What's that? I said, which are terrible for you, by the way. The, yes, um, they ruin your eyesight. Um, amongst other health problems, they emit EMF frequencies, but I think they hook you up to the smart grid. Oh, uh, that makes sense. And then the thermostats are, most of them are smart thermostats and they have been able to turn off people's thermostats remotely mm -hmm. when you have yes, a they've been thermostat. doing that. Yeah, they were doing that in California last summer. I yes. heard a lot of people like coming home to a hot house because they just turned off their turn AC off. on them. And if you got animals and stuff, like what, right. why, you know, like that's horrible. Like you shouldn't, you're a paying customer. You should be able to have your house right. cool or heated like they're trying to do the same thing in the cold states where you know in the in the exactly. winter time it's it's dark for sure yeah and so why i've stayed here and i was looking at moving to mexico looking to move to florida texas idaho montana is that i don't have to have heat or air conditioning here it stays yeah. cool enough in the summer. My house is situated with big trees, but they also wanted everyone to get rid of their lawns and put in AstroTurf. You got paid by the state of California and Solano County if you put in AstroTurf. And what AstroTurf does is it raises the heat so much of the soil that your trees will die. And so, yeah. And, and it causes trees, cancer for kids that play on it. Like all the kids that did cancer. soccer. And yeah. if you, I got a heat gun. And I put the heat gun on pavement and then I put it on the AstroTurf and the AstroTurf was 10 to 20 degrees hotter than the pavement. So what wow. happens is not only that, it's releasing all those harmful chemicals, formaldehyde, toluene, God knows what else into the environment and then into anyone that's sitting on it. Yeah. And it also destroys that, that soil so that yeah. it bakes it and it cracks and the, it can't permeate water so the trees will all die. And I had a tree that died because of a neighbor's astroturf. When the wow. tree cutters came by, they said this was their busiest year they've ever had. They cannot keep up with all the trees that are dying. That's so sad. That's horrible. And the smell has to be terrible too. Like There was one park I went to once that was... They had like chopped up pieces of tire as like right the and like the you could see like the metal in the tires like in the and there's little kids running around barefoot. Right. I'm like, why are you first of all letting your kid run around barefoot? Like the blacks the, the bottoms of their right. feet were black. Like my daughter's shoes, like we were there very shortly of and then we left. It was smelled horrible like the you could smell it coming from like 10 feet around like you're not even on top of it and you right. could smell like the plastic in the air from it and I'm like who said this was a good idea like this is the worst well, idea I, ever yeah and and when we look at that what I really want to point out is that it's on purpose this is by design yeah. it is by design to kill the foliage it is by design whatever they're spraying in the chemtrails we know we don't know specifically aluminum and barium and, and different chemicals but it mm -hmm. makes it so that the soil is like a plastic or it the water beads up and rolls off of it it's not getting into the soil to water the mm -hmm. trees so either they can survive only if they've hit groundwater or primary water or they they die and then then we look at okay so then when we see these fires happen the they blame the power companies but it ends up enslaving us so much further when yeah. we do that because we're cheerleading for them to oh let's replace these 
electric lines. We don't ever want this to happen again. It was a horrible tragedy. So we're yeah. cheerleading and paying for them to further smart, smart grid these cities. And that's what we're talking about. And what they've done here in California, the other thing with the LED lights is they've replaced every single street light with an LED light. And those can be used for the smart grid as well. So for s surveillance and who knows what else. Yeah, it's dark. It's definitely planned 100%. And, you know, they want to distract us um, with acting like it's it's something um, like they pretty much they wanted to um, roll this out and blame dudes in my opinion like the directed energy weapons like that's the scapegoat in my opinion for this yeah. I'm not saying that the do weapons don't exist back in 2000 you know 16 2018 like I've been talking about directed energy weapons for a long time so i get a lot of people that are like oh it, it, it totally exists i'm like i'm not saying it doesn't i'm just saying they wouldn't even need to use them to do what they're doing like the stuff that they're like the fires that we're seeing like there's um this video that i found of this guy who was um his neighborhood was fine and all the neighborhoods around him were fine but there was it just so happened that the the one townhome that was um you know for like cheaper housing or whatever for right. like the workforce or whatever happened to burn and all the other places didn't burn and he was trying to say it was because they used like um you know certain kind of building materials or whatever and i'm just like come on like there's no way that like that, that you know and, and he was saying also that he thought it was because of the over the power lines that were you know that were overhead in all the other places that fell over and started fires right. i'm like but and then he said in my neighborhood all of the lines are underground already and i'm like okay so if they're all underground then how did this start fire in your neighborhood with the underground poles like if that's right. what you claim is the reason why that this happened like you're already contradicting yourself by being like oh it started because of this but here's the neighborhood where they had underground lines and when he panned down on the ground they have it in the the video um it's like an hour and a half video i tried to make it short but <laughs> it didn't happen um but they're like in the very beginning of the video i show them um on the ground there's like power boxes like you know access points to the power lines with black around it like there was clearly fire coming up from under the ground and that's what one of the first reports that i heard of this woman on the news saying there was fire coming up from underground so um and then now knowing that they have smart meters also linked up to people's gas um their you know natural gas lines like there's your igniter and there's your your fuel so if yes. it, and then now also you're seeing all the reports of people having um like the um the city is actually suing the electric company because they didn't turn the power off. So they were claiming that some people, you know, some people said they didn't have power earlier on in the day, almost like they were taking power from somewhere else to right. funnel it all to one specific area. And it, with what they can do with the smart meters, I mean, we already know that they can target specific specific neighborhoods, specific houses, and turn your power off, turn it up, turn it down, do whatever they want. So why wouldn't they, you know, maybe turn a few areas off and then funnel everything in? Because if everybody is claiming that like, okay, these power lines went down and they were a live wire for however long they were there and they weren't t turning it off like they were supposed to, and now there's actual lawsuits against them, it kind of proves that like the power wasn't turned off like you know like the reports were saying and then i'm also questioning whether the, the water was ever turned off because there's now several videos that i've seen of people hosing stuff off at you yeah know, three four o'clock and they got hoses going i'm like it looks like water's running fine to me i mean there was another you know, there. yeah there was another couple that saw a fire un like burning from underneath from underground mm -hmm. burning the bushes and he stopped and got their hose and was putting out their fire and they were on the news as the good samaritans and i saw like, that yeah i think I we you know we saved their house but you look at it well then you did have water yeah exactly and the and the fire was coming up from underneath there was nothing mm -hmm. coming down on yeah it. it wasn't a wildfire it wasn't a laser yeah. beam it wasn't and that's another thing is if it were you know lasers from airplanes like you would need like a fleet of airplanes to do the damage and you would see like like you know damage inside of the like in the ground like go, right. you know what I mean going from car to car to car or whatever and then it would um, be more of a swath yeah 
Exactly. And, and, and like, okay, so then I was thinking, okay, it's, I don't think it's lasers, you know, millimeter weapons, like, you know, Thor, you know, normally like goes, um, a, like they've used it for drones, but that doesn't mean that they couldn't take those millimeter waves and direct it at something else. So I was thinking, okay, maybe it's Thor. Um, but then looking more into that too, like, you know, cause you could, you know, ground based would be the thing that would make the most sense. So it still isn't out of the realm of possibilities in my mind, but I just consider that there were reports of flames coming up from under the ground i just to me that like the most like the thing that makes the most sense would just be the smart meter thing you know that's just to me it makes the most sense you got the fuel you got the gas lines you got all of that right there the trees aren't burning so it would i feel like the trees would have been also you know nuked or whatever and i mean yeah it's not like we're there and we can cut open a tree and see if the tree is black on the inside or whatever because right. i know that's what they were doing in 2018 um with those fires but you know the official story back then was that the smart meters started the homes on fire like that was the official narrative so that it's crazy that they admit certain things like they're telling you the truth in some ways but then also like putting in all these disinfo agents to steer you into these other, you know, conspiracy, you know, sections yeah. or whatever also. So well, and I think that also Jenna is by design because I look at, I'm extremely censored on YouTube. I've gotten two strikes. I have a following of 1000. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't have a big audience. Why, why are they shutting my voice down? Well, then I look at people like Peggy Hall and, and that guy, the real estate agent that interviewed fish and yeah. they have no problem going everywhere and, and yeah. saying, you know, hours and hours and hours of video talking about Josh green, talking about direct energy weapons, talking about all of these things that you would think they would be censoring. But yet mm -hmm. they, they have a huge platform. She's got yeah. hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people following her. Um, yeah. and, and now that, that real estate agent also, and was, and somehow he was able to go back in and film and yeah. ride his bike through and film. The he had a to do that. He admitted in that video, which is now deleted, which also is suspect of how many videos that man has deleted off of his channel is super suspect. Um, but that video, he said, we got a pass to be here. So it's okay. I know people aren't allowed in here right now, but we got a pass. Like, it was almost like he right. was bragging about it, you know, right. and then. And then the the guy who got the drone footage right the day after he got arrested by FEMA. So how is it the guy who got the he didn't even step foot in there? He literally flew a drone yeah. in there and got arrested. But this guy's got a pass, like, right. and then showing like a blue shirt. Oh look, this blue shirt survived, yeah. kind of like a passport, you know? Like it's I don't know. And I it's, think that's it's to direct our attention. It's this red herring. It's like no, don't look at smart meters. Don't look at actually things that you guys could do. Start mm -hmm. just freaking out about direct energy lasers. weapons and go paint your roof blue and you know get get a blue car because then you're safe. It's like everyone's afraid right now, but yeah. trying to hurt us over to this all of this um, mumbo jumbo. I think it is. I think Peggy yeah. Hall has a like if you are on YouTube with a big platform and you're talking about conspiracies like this, they want you to see it. Yeah. Because we what are you going to do against a direct energy weapon? Nothing. There's nothing yeah. you can do. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. And so painting like, your, uh, yourself blue, it doesn't that's that's all staged too. Like those umbrellas were staged there. They were actually tan umbrellas before like if you look at the Google images search or whatever, they weren't blue before. So they right. put those blue things there. There's, if you look, I mean, all you have to do is just watch the drone footage yourself and count the amount of other colored cars and roofs. And there's gray and, um, you know, green roofs and green tanks and, um, red cars and red, a red roof and, or a couple of red roofs. There's, I mean, I was counting the things and I'm like, okay, with like, this isn't making any sense. Like that's when I first was like, okay, this blue thing is like, it already sounded stupid when I first right. heard it, but I'm like, all right, let me look into this a little bit more and actually like, you know, see, see if what they're saying is true. And it totally, I mean, yeah, there was like one blue car I think I saw in there and the other blue car was one that had been parked up there that wasn't even in it. You hadn't been damaged or whatever. Right. Um, you know, there's, there's so much that doesn't make sense with the, you know, the two cars that were in the middle of the field that were burned up and there was nothing around. It was right by the high school. And it was one of the videos that the real estate guy did. 
um, and he's showing the the back of the car. It looks like maybe even explosives could have been planted in the trunk because the back end looked way more damaged than the front end. The, the back um, wheel hub had melted. The front wheel hub had not. Um, then he goes around to the front and is like, oh, look, this poor cat was stuck in here. Uh, and there, the cat has fur. And I'm like, right. so it melted metal, but the fur on the cat yeah. is still somehow there like right it doesn't it's not adding up and it's and i mean that okay. guy in his own sorry what well I, what i wanted to say too about the cars and the lithium batteries and all of these smart cars anything you said after 2009 i've heard 2013 but they can remotely shut your car down wouldn't they be able yep. to remotely ignite your car i saw like i was telling you i saw a woman in napa car was exploded on the side of the road, the firefighters could not put that Range Rover out. And it was a newer one. And she was yeah. you know, and standing well, he was able to get yeah. out. Wouldn't they be able to do the same thing? And if they planted all those cars in there that were electric cars, well, those mm -hmm. are those are easily controlled on the smart grids, these smart cities. That's what we're talking about. That's why we're so alarmed with with turning all of this United States into smart cities because they have complete control over your existence, whether you drive your car, whether it explodes, whether your house explodes, whether there's smart meters, they can shut your electricity off. If you're in a place that's really hot, they can shut your air conditioning down. Elderly people cannot survive in that. Yeah. Same thing with the boats, the boats that were on fire. Um, I, you know, I've known quite a few people that are really into the fishing world and lithium, um, batteries are really big in the boat world because they're, you mm -hmm. know, like you have, you know, maybe one or two solar panels, you know, depending on how big your boat is or whatever. Um, and so the lithium, just the lithium batteries in general, to me, I just think are super dangerous. Like I'm not saying don't do solar, but maybe do the, um, like the deep cycle batteries, the old school batteries that don't just randomly like ignite on you or if they get a drop of water on them or whatever. Right. Like if you look up those videos of like lithium batteries and water, like it's a bad, I'm like, why would you ever put this on a boat? Right. <laughs> oh, well, as long as your boat's not sinking, it's like, yeah, but like someone could just accidentally like, dump a bucket or something over and like, yeah. then you have like or this raging weather. inferno. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, like, come on, like we know that they, one of the things that they've done over and over again in all of these events that they plan and stage is like, like it's really hard for people to think that they staged some boats out there to be on fire too. Like, is that really out of the realm of possibilities? Right. Like, and there was a, a blue boat that was totally burnt too. So there goes your blue story yeah. about yeah. the blue stuff. Like there's a blue boat right there that was totally burned yeah. on the water. And like, you know, it doesn't, you don't need, directed energy weapons to have a boat fire like that's not a, you know what i mean like it doesn't yeah it doesn't need to happen the way that they claim that it happened and the fact that there's not one other all the channels it, you know what it reminds me of like you know those clips that you see of the the different news channels and they're all like verbatim saying the same exact thing that's right. what the truth or channels are turned into now it's yes. literally like a truth or trap is what i call it like it's totally something that they're all repeating themselves you can put them all and that none of them are, are even suggesting any other possibility like nope this is it hands down this is yeah. this is what it is and you're some government agent shill if you use your brain and yeah. think otherwise basically that's and that's the problem and i think that this whole truther community has been deeply, deeply infiltrated by who knows government officials. But I was telling you, I, I started this medical system underground in California for people that absolutely did not feel safe going to the hospital. And I wouldn't go, you know, set foot near them. But there were people there that were sabotaging everything and they say the same narrative. You can tell they, they're, they're very friendly. They have a big following. They're gregarious and they, they are doing like, no, we know for sure. None of us, not one single person on this planet knows anything for sure. Yeah. Except for maybe like, if you go back and look at the ruling class, it is the British Royals goes yeah. back to Egyptian times and the Hebrews and, and all of that. Like you can look up Jason Kristoff's work to see uh, our best guess. Like we're just trying to put puzzle pieces together here. 
Yeah. And so, totally. they, but they know mm-hmm. because they've been doing this and they've been doing the same playbook. And it, the playbook is for us to, to trick us into poisoning ourselves or, you know, keeping smart meters on our house and, and, you know, complaining about a $20 extra fee or eight, you know, now it's 80. Yeah. It's a lot of money, but it's worth it because that's extricating ourselves from the system. And the system is 100% stacked against you. So back to like all these people that, that have infiltrated it. When you hear one story and one type of narrative, it's called propaganda, whether it's a truther or a freedom oriented person, like they're going to tell you things that are true so that you trust them. And then they're going to, to lead you down another pathway. And so that's why it's like, you have to empower yourself. You have to trust your gut feeling and your wisdom and start researching all the different avenues. Like what makes sense to you? Yeah, totally. I agree a hundred percent. They they want you to get yourself incarcerated. They want you to um, put yourself in a situation where you're, you're so emotional, you're so worked up about these missing kids or this or that. And like, you know, like it's, and it's all like, it's crazy. There's still not one video of a mom saying, where's my kid, you know, blah, 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 like, or grandparents or anybody like they're not one. And even like, um, they said on one of the things that 850 people are missing. And then it said 200 kids missing. And I'm like, so did the did the okay, 200, 2,000 children? I'm like, well, do the children not count as people? Shouldn't it be 2,850 right. people missing? And now it's gone down to 300. Well, it was what, three something? And then they took 250 people off. They were all accounted for. And then the FBI, and this was on the news too, like the news said, oh, and then the FBI put 250 more people back on the list different names and they were scrolling down and that ones with the asterisk next to it were the ones that actually had like a a missing persons report out on them which was like one person and then like 10 people without the asterisk and then one person so it was very few people even on that list that had an actual missing persons report on them so so much of the numbers is lies and we we just can't we can't trust anything. I mean, we already have known that we can't trust them in previous things, but it's like all of a sudden now because it's in Hawaii, everyone's like, oh, but look at the foot, you know, the wreckage. I'm like, I'm not saying there wasn't a fire. There was clearly fire. Yeah. Like there was clearly damage done, but they're also showing black and white photos. They're also making it a lot more dramatic than they were, just like in East Palestine where they showed this mushroom cloud. I'm, I'm 20 miles from East Palestine. There was no mushroom cloud. That was a lie. Um, the footage the I got, uh, the closest I got was a nine mile away um picture of the plume and it you could barely even see it in the sky barely see it i mean i'm not right. saying that they didn't set something on fire but it was all staged it was all you know none of the tanks were breached if you watch the hearing i know this isn't about that but like it they all interconnect with each other i see similarities between that's all of it. What we need claimed, to, yeah that's what everybody we're claimed. after is the playbook Exactly. They they claimed that people people were claiming that they were poisoned, that the water was this, that the air was this, that the you know, everything was poisoned, right? But then when you watch the hearing, like none of the tanks that were inspected were breached. None of them had any leaks. There was nothing that, and, and if you look up vinyl chloride, it's a gas. So it and there has been other in two thousand twelve there was a vinyl chloride um wreck that it leaves like a fog, like a white fog sitting on top. So it doesn't actually go down into the soil like and absorb into the water like they were claiming that's not how it works so so we didn't see any of that like if there was an actual breach you would have seen fog this white fog all over everything which we did not see and they admitted under testimony that there was or under oath or whatever that it wasn't um that there was no breach of the tanks there was no reason to burn whatever it was that they burned we don't even know what they burned like they could have just been like you know, coal or something like there was, you know, who knows, but like, we do know that they're after the land. We do know that there's a bunch of cobalt, there's oil, there's natural gas. They want these, these, um, pipelines going from East Palestine to PA because there's less strict laws in Ohio than there are in PA. There's so, I mean, there's so much more to this. Like people have been selling their, their mineral rights, like we, um, since 2012 around East Palestine too. So like, you know, nobody wants to bring that up. Everyone was talking about that nonstop. Stu Peters brought it up three weeks after it happened. And then all of a sudden everybody's freaking out about it and everybody got tests, but not one person came out with their test results. And then now if you 
look up those same people that got the test, their, their channels are scrubbed. They don't even exist anymore, according to the internet. Like, they're gone. So how, how could that not be a sign that that was, like, a stage? Those were crisis actors. Nobody actually got tests. Like, none of this was done. I'm the only person that actually got test results that I know of that and released them. And it came up um, BDL, below detectable levels on all the VOCs. There was no, there was no, and I was literally, like, less than a quarter mile from where the crash happened on February 23rd or 24th. Um, and like, and it was, oh, cool, the crash happened. The, the, um, there was a tank that was like right next to the, the, the rails that was there a month before that was just planted there for some reason. And that was more of an inferno than the actual train that crashed. Like when you look at the footage, it's like a burning inferno. I'm like, who, what was in that tank? Why was that, bur what was in that, that car that was burning like that? Right. It's crazy. And it was right where the, um, the Masonic Lodge was. And that's, I'm sure, just a coincidence that that's right where they, like, that's like right where the crash right. happened pretty much, like less than a quarter mile from there. So that's actually where I parked and hiked in and got my water sample from Sulphur Run right there. And nobody, you know, nobody wants to talk about it. I've hit up so many of the big channels, like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm here. I got test yeah. results. Let's yeah. talk. And nobody wants to talk to me. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> you know, like, that's, a, that's a recurring theme for me also. Um, and I know this is off topic, but with vitamin D3, it's rat poison, but yet I'm banned on all the telegram channels with all the supposed freedom people. Amanda Vollmer has banned me from everything, called me a narcissist, said that um, there was something wrong with me um, emotionally for, for daring to question and saying, stop telling people to take vitamin D3. We don't have a rat poison deficiency. And it is as harmful as any of the jabs. I, yeah. I it's I've terrible. done extensive research on it. So this common thread is what we need to uh, expose. I always like to do the last 10 minutes on empowering ourselves and hope. So what do you consider like this, the, the common threads? Cause you have that unique experience being in Palestine. I have the unique experience of, of being in Lahaina and also knowing the attorney that's suing the power companies. I know somebody that works for the power company, and it's mm -hmm. starting like all these puzzle pupils are starting to put together and we have way more power than we think. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the biggest conspiracy of it all is that they're trying to convince everybody that they don't have the power that they do. Like they, they're trying to convince us that our minds are not, that's why they're trying to hack our minds. They're trying to hack our, I mean, all of these, these different um, programs, these government programs are, they revolve around, um, trying to convince us that, oh, we're just one person, separate us from each other, separate us from, from other conspiracy people. Like, like you're the outsider in the conspiracy land. You don't have any power, blah, blah, blah. You know, but at the end of the day, like, like you're, you're one person. I get that. But when, if you're working every day, a little by little towards, you know, having certain goals, being self-sufficient, getting that instead of maybe, um, you know, maybe you don't want to go the route of this, of the smart meter, but it costs $80 a month, like start really putting away money for a generator and just be like, you know what, I'm just going to get a generator and I'm going to get some propane and I'm going to, you know, like you might not be able to do it right this second, but eventually if you save up every day, little by little, you will be able to get that generator. You will be able to be that one little cog in the system to mess it up, to mess up their plans. And once you lead by example, other people will be like, oh, wait, your bills, your your electricity bills only this much because you're buying gas and propane? Like, oh, shoot, I should be doing that. And then more and more people will see because they see that you're doing it, that you're living it. And that's really the most important thing, in my opinion, is to, like, talk about it, be about it, you know, like, do whatever you can to... Um, make your situation less reliant on them, you know, be supporting your local neighbor who has, you know, chickens and like eggs and stuff that you can buy off of them and, you know, buy raw milk, buy, you know, do things that, that will help your family and your body and yourself. Because at the end of the day, like they're not trying to look out for us. We need to be looking out for each other and, um, you know, whatever, whatever you can do to help each other, you know, through that, whether or not they're into the same thing or not, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter if they agree with you on, on, you know, the semantics of the, you know, it's do, it's this, it's that. We know that they're against us. So yeah. at the end of the day, like, we should all be, you know, 
helping each other. Like, I don't want to be, char- like, I've had people tell me, like, oh, you should give, you should be, like, a natural path. And I'm like, yeah, and charge people, like, $100 an hour to tell them, like, something that's common sense that we should be telling each other for free. That's you know, it. like, this- that's, I want to put an exclamation point on that because Tom Cowan, Dr. Tom Cowan, Dr. Andy Kaufman charges $800 per hour to oh. meet with one patient. That is not affordable. Um, what so Kelly Brogan charges five thousand dollars for one class? What this is this is what I'm talking about. Like these people are not for us. They are out yeah. to go for more of our money and to yeah. get you in a state of fear, like over your health. And that's how I am. Like I have, I had a woman contact me from South Africa that had all these bumps all over her skin, she didn't have two pennies to rub together. I'm like, of course I'll help you. Yeah, like you could probably do some let's do trade time. So she's helping me um, with my social media. There's always something that you can do to create that currency, that energy exchange, no matter what. And like, you're absolutely 100% right. We don't charge all of, you know, because we have this wisdom, we share our wisdom, we get all, Mm -hmm. you know, and it doesn't matter if you believe in the is going to come and kill you. Let's create a food for us. Can we talk about that? Can we agree on that? Like, this system, look around you. It is not, has never benefited us. It is only for more enslavement, more toxicity, more poison, more enslavement of the mind till they, till they want to be able to brain chip us so that yeah. they have 100% control. And then these smart cities with 100% surveillance, meaning like you won't be able to leave anywhere. And I think that's why they're painting all the sidewalks out here. This, bright neon green it's in different cities same pattern same color it's i believe is for surveillance it could be surveillance with the street lights like we don't know but Mm -hmm. we're just saying like this system has to be extricated from it has to be starved if you fight against it like my friend went and became an american national and got the land patents on her house and did all those things like to the letter and is now losing her house, losing her car, losing all of these things. That's what they want. They want you to go up against them because they're too big. If you start, if like, if we, all of us, eight point something billion of us decided we're not spending any of our money for seven days, they would starve to death. It would be. Eat it if they live, starve if they die, right? That's it. And so you look at, yourself like do you go to starbucks do you have an amazon um account do you go to costco do you go to these big box stores and if you do don't shame yourself or judge yourself but how can you then start supporting local there's now yeah. apps that will find farmers for you start go yeah. to the farm and talk to the farmer yourself these guys are are being starved by the government too real realmilk.com i think it is um a campaign for real milk that is um for the past 10 years that's where i've found my raw milk i've lived in like five different states over the past 10 years and every one of them i've found like i mean 10 years ago it was you'd look at the map of the u.s and there was like you know a few dots here and there it wasn't that many now it's exploded so that gives me hope that like People are catching on to this. People are, and it's not just milk. It's like, you know, it's goat milk, cow's milk, um, camel eggs, milk, feed, raw, whatever. One, raw one half camel's milk. I was able yeah. to get a guy, uh, an 80 something year old man. Uh, he was addicted to drugs and prescriptions. In two weeks, I had him detox with raw one hemp camel's milk. So it's awesome. like, just keep asking. And then you go to mm-hmm. the farm and, and talk to them about, okay, well, what about vegetables? You know, anyone that has veggies or could we? Yeah, they all know each other. Once you get in contact with one, you'll get in contact yes. with all of them. Yes. So that's and that's why that's they want us apart. And that's mm-hmm. why they want your and my voices so silent because that's what we're speaking about. We're not speaking yep. about come to my channel and my website and spend $5,000 on my program. It's like, no, my, my information is free. Let's start yeah. forming these bonds together so that we do that we can completely extricate ourselves from the system and medicine like yeah you know, maybe i'll definitely have you back on the show but my medicine cabinet consists of baking soda activated charcoal oil of oregano colloidal silver and maybe a few herbs and tinctures yarrow 
you, you should add yarrow powder to that. And when I used to, I work in kitchens and I, um, people were always cutting themselves and they always would use like cayenne pepper to clot the blood, but it burns like it stings yeah. or, or lime juice or lemon juice also right. works, but that also stings and burns really bad. Yarrow powder, super cheap. I got one pound bag for like 10 bucks, organic yarrow powder. I mean, it grows like a flower on the side of the freeway. So I mean, you can go right. harvest it yourself or whatever, but it clots the blood. It's a, you know, it actually does both. It knows what you need. It, it like if you take it internally like and you have like a um and you need the blood to get flowing it knows if it needs to like loosen something up and get it flowing or it will clot it if there is like a, a some sort of like a ruptured something wow. it does both which is amazing that's what plants do that's what plants yeah. do like if you take then if you take the plant and chemicalize it and put it in prescription then it creates all these harmful effects but when you have the whole plant it's adaptogenic it knows what to do and it's in yeah. harmony with your body it's like your body and the plants are communicating with each other. Yeah. And one more thing, bee propolis. Um, I've witnessed three different people now um, had MRSA, had, you know, the antibiotic resistant MRSA and took bee propolis. So some of them didn't even take it internally. You can take it internally if you have a really bad infection. I would suggest take it internally and put it topically. Um, my friend had like a tattoo that he couldn't wash on his back, a new tattoo. Right. And it was... Um, like a hole in his back that was growing and it was huge. And I just started putting bee propolis on it within one day, it was closing up and it was healing up. So oh they God, have people that are in the hospital for months on end that, uh, that like, you know, it's antibiotic resistant, blah, 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 yeah. blah, not to be propolis, but they can't, they can't, um, patent bee propolis because it comes it's found in nature so you know all of the things that they've been suppressing that Rothschild cult has been suppressing for all of these years like there's a reason why they've been suppressing yeah. it because it works and it's free or it's you know free if you go and harvest it yourself but it's 10 bucks for a little bottle of bee propolis that'll last me at least right, a year you know that. I did, and this is why we need to come together and share because then you can get all of the things, you know, as a home health nurse and hospice nurse, I can tell you like, here's what I've seen work on my patients. What do you think would work for this patient? They've been really resistant. And so mm -hmm. we can have this group that we can share all this information so that we can up level. I mean, that's why they huge reason they want us apart. That's why they mm -hmm. want, I, I call you and I people that that aren't in it for the money, we're pure hearts. Like we really, mm -hmm. really want to, to see people do better. And we're not going to yeah. make it so that only the the rich can afford our work or people go into the poor house because they're so afraid. They're like, well, they'll save me. And yeah. that's the other thing I want to just point out too in this whole thread is the savior complex. Mm -hmm. We all have a savior complex. Like Jesus Christ is coming back to, to save us. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is going to save us. Trump's going to save us. No one's going to save us. They're all nope. part of it. If they're on yep. a screen with a big audience, they're part of it. They're part of the bloodline. Trump is part of the bloodline. All of these people are they're part of the bloodline. They're related. The wall. Yeah. And it doesn't take much digging to see that. It's political theater. It's um, truth or theater. It's freedom theater is the, what we're talking yeah. about. And it's a distraction. All it is is a distraction yes. from making you do real world work on yourself and on and your community. That's it, 100%. Instead of spending that time building gardens in your backyard, I mean, I'm creating a food forest in my backyard. I'm a single mom with three jobs and a 16-year-old boy, and I can do it. If I can do yeah. it, anybody can do it. It's just yeah. one do one small thing a day towards mm -hmm. that independence. If you're, that whatever goal, you're yeah. buying, think, okay, eggs. I'm buying eggs from the store. Where can I get eggs? Mm -hmm. Go around, like, uh, you know, most of the people in your community probably have some chickens and, and ask them, like, do you have an excess of eggs or do you know somebody that does? And just keep yep. talking to people. And when you talk to them, ask them all these questions. Let them, you know, know what you're interested in doing. It's amazing yep. how willing people are to help. And, and talk to your neighbors, too. Like, I... I'm not even technically supposed to have chickens where I'm at. And I got five chickens and they're free range chickens. They run around the whole neighborhood. Like, I don't even care. Like they, and like, I'm like, Hey neighbors, you guys cool with this? Yeah, we're cool. Like here, I'll give you some eggs, like whatever. Yeah. So that, you know, we have all these empty lots around us. And I'm like, dude, if we, if, if we came together, like, 
you know, they have this deal here where if you you own, you mow it, you buy it or something like that. Or if you own it, you mow it, you own it. That's what it is. So I'm like, we got a bunch of like, you know, a cow, some goats, yes. whatever. Like, you know, and there's certain areas like I know you're not supposed to have a cow, but if you just have one cow, like it wouldn't stink up the neighborhood too bad. You know what I mean? And if you have enough space in between houses to where it's okay and you can kind of hide them and keep it incognito, like that's the kind of stuff we need to be yeah. thinking about is like, that's it. If it's illegal, what are you going to get a ticket? Okay. Give me a ticket. You want some milk? Here you yeah. go. Be on your yeah, way. Like, exactly. You know I mean? That's a dinner or some butter or some cheese, like, especially the way, and they're, they're cutting their own foot off because they're making groceries expensive. And we actually had to go to the grocery store last night. My son is bulking on, you know, bodybuilding and stuff. He wanted a steak. Um, that will be the last time I go to a grocery store because I bought a steak. That was not a mm-hmm. steak. I grew up on a ranch in Nevada. That was not meat. Yeah. I don't know what it wow. was. Yeah, we wow. fed it to the dog. Like it was disgusting. Together. And it was wow. like a light pinkish color, almost Ooh. like you would see as pork or something. But okay, so that was it. Mm-hmm. And then I bought organic kale. Yeah. Because I thought, well, I'll just get a little kale so I don't have to go rummaging around my yard. And it was it tasted like plastic. It was mm. incredible. I, th- I, ha- I threw it all away and I spent $50 of just my money to the man. And so yeah. it's like, no, I'm done. I have enough yes. foraging food and you can forage. I get that's some other things we can talk about too. But um, we are out of time. I've got to okay. run. So okay. thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. And um, I'm going to have all of your links in the show notes. I highly recommend that anyone follow... They, they can find you on the links, but Rusted Soul on YouTube. And then you kind of can find more of our good <laughs> material on other channels like BitChute, Rumble, Odyssey, For Now. And then you have to keep going like deeper and deeper underground <laughs> as they infiltrate those channels. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me.